Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ila Jan Khandelwal, a pathology faculty. Now students have come up with this video of the important images in systemic pathology because I got a lot of messages from students that ma'am, uh, we want to revise all the images of systemic pathology just before the MCQ exams, right? Now uh, for simplification, I have divided this video into two sub parts. Today in this video, we are going to discuss half of the images of systemic pathology and in two days, I'm going to release another video in which we'll dis uh, discuss the rest of the systemic pathology images, right? I hope these images would really help you in your MCQ exams because these days a lot of clinical pathologic uh, questions are asked from systemic pathology images, right? So without wasting any more time, first of all, let us do the images from blood vessels and heart, right? Now in heart, in blood vessel students, a very important image which is usually asked is that of arteriosclerosis. What is arteriosclerosis? It is thickening or hardening of arteries. It is of two kinds, you all know, hyaline arteries arteriosclerosis and hyperplastic arteriosclerosis. Hyaline arteriosclerosis is seen in patients with benign hypertension and hyperplastic arteriosclerosis is seen in patients with malignant hypertension. Now how are these two images uh, looking like? Hyaline means pink homogeneous material. So when you see a blood vessel, how do you identify a blood vessel? This is a lumen and the lumen has got red blood cells, right? So this is basically a blood vessel and these are the RBCs which are present in the lumen. This is how I identify a blood vessel, right? Can you see in this image there is this pink hyaline thickening of the vessel wall? So this is basically hyaline arteriosclerosis, right? In similarly in this image also, can you see this pinkish thickening? This is hyaline. And in contrast, students, in this image, can you see laminated concentric thickening of the vessel wall because of the proliferation, right? This is basically called as hyperplastic arteriosclerosis. And because you all know that pathologists are really fond of food, it looks like an onion skin appearance. That is why we call it as an onion skin appearance. Uh, MCQ, which can be popularly asked is onion skin appearance of the vessel wall is seen in. Answer is hyperplastic arteriosclerosis sclerosis or malignant hypertension. Understood? Then students, uh, this image from heart has been asked in the INICET and the NEET exam approximately four to five times. If a patient has got myocardial infarction, which is less than 12 hours old, right? Then you can use a stain. First question is they can ask you which stain you can use. The stain which we use is TTC, that is triphenyl tetrasodium chloride. Now, when you paint the cut surface of a heart, which is affected with MI within 12 hours with TTC, what will you see? The yellowish area which we will see is the infarcted area. The infarcted area is pale or yellow in color, while this is the normal heart which retains the brick red color of TTC. Why is that so? The infarcted area becomes pale or yellow because of the loss of dehydrogenase activity. Loss of dehydrogenase activity and the normal heart retains the dehydrogenase. That is why it retains the brick red color. Very important image. This is a flashcard. Next students. <coughs> A latest question which is there is contraction band necrosis. You must have heard of. Now, this contraction band necrosis is seen in ischemia reperfusion injury. So, suppose my patient has got some coronary artery disease and you do tissue plasminogen activator or you do stenting, sometimes it has been seen that the patient uh, symptoms worsens in the first few hours. This is due to the generation of free radicals. This injury is called as ischemia reperfusion injury and histopathologically the cardiac myocytes usually show these band. Can you appreciate these pinkish bands which are there? This is called as contraction band necrosis. Understood? Easy? Next students. Okay, this is a very, very important image. Last year in INICT exam with a particular history, that is a history of a child with type 2, type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and then the child has fever, sore throat 2 to 3 weeks back with a heart disease. They asked you what is the diagnosis. The diagnosis was rheumatic heart disease. This was the image which was given. Can you see these are the cardiac myocytes? In the center, can you see this area? This is called as the Ashkoff bodies. It looks like a granuloma, right? Now, this Ashkoff body basically consists of lymphocytes, 
giant cells along with a very important another cell that is called as a anish cow cell or a caterpillar cell because it looks like a caterpillar in this particular image can you appreciate these types of cells so these are all students caterpillar cells or anish cow cells which are a part of ashcroft body and what is pathog pathognomic of rheumatic heart disease it is this ashcroft body correct next okay this image has been added in the 10th edition of robins that is why it is a potential question very potential question students if my patient has got dilated cardiomyopathy and that too due to titan gene mutation then the biopsy is going to show you something which is called as the ninja stars nuclei again pathology is all about observation and then imagination so we've already done onion skin and here when i see the biopsy it looks like ninja stars that is why these nuclei are called as the ninja star nuclei understood it is seen in dilated cardiomyopathy due to titan gene mutation right next okay these were the important images from blood vessels and heart now let me move to the genital system right this potter with a history was also asked in the mcq exam last year if you are given that the history is that of a umbilicated or dome shaped lesion or you are given such a image in skin right and microscopically you see these eosinophilic inclusions in the epidermis and the dermis you make a diagnosis as molluscum contagiosum right what is this spotter it is molluscum contagiosum this was also a spotter in my uh, uh, final md exam right so it is very very important molluscum contagiosum umbilicated dome shaped lesions with inclusions inside the epidermis and the dermis correct next okay whenever uh, there is a history of some warty lesions in the genital area they are sometimes called as condyloma acuminatum because they look like a cauliflower and they are mostly due to human papilloma virus infection now hpv is a very very hot topic for the examiner i'm sure you must have done it in detail in both pathology and gynecology the vaccines and all also right so please do this topic in detail because it is one of the examiner's favorite you all know that hpv is of two types low risk and high risk low risk causes warts and high risk causes cancer now whenever there is hpv infection a pap smear or a biopsy whenever it comes to a pathologist what we see is something which is called as coelocytes what are these coelocyte students these are cells with thickened membrane the membrane becomes very thick right the cells have got a resin like nucleus it is somewhat like a kishmish and there is a halo around them that is called as a perinuclear halo so a cell with thick membrane resin like nucleus and a perinuclear halo that is called as a coelocyte in this image can you people appreciate these cells so these cells with the characteristic perinuclear halo are actually the coelocyte whenever in the mcq exam you are given the term coelocyte start thinking in terms of hpv quickly tell me what is the protein the pathogenic protein of hpv it is e6 and e7 e6 binds to p53 and e7 binds to rb and inactivates when it inactivates these tumor suppressor genes it leads to basically the development of warts and cancer right next now let us move to the ovarian tumor students the first ovarian tumor is serous cyst adenocarcinoma of ovary now students if the image is given uh, you, what you have to see two things papillary structures and very important are these purplish things which you see these are actually the samoma bodies you all know in which all conditions do you see samoma bodies papillary carcinoma of thyroid papillary renal cell carcinoma meningioma serous cyst adenocarcinoma of ovary can also be seen in mesotheliomas right so basically in all these conditions you see samoma bodies these purplish things which you see these are samoma bodies which are foci of dystrophic calcification so this tumor will show samoma bodies along with papillin this image is usually not asked in the exams right next students this image can definitely be asked this is that of brenner's tumor when you see the histopathological slide what you see can you see these nests of cells 
Don't you think these nests or cells, they look like those of transitional epithelium or the epithelium which we see in the urinary bladder, the urothelial epithelium, right? So that is why whenever there is an ovary which is showing, showing transitional epithelium, you start thinking in terms of Brenner's tumor. That is the diagnosis which we make. Understood? This is also a very characteristic slide that is why very important for MCQ exams, right? Then students... Dysterminoma. What is the counterpart of dysterminoma in the testis? It is called as a seminoma. So, what do you see in dysterminoma of the ovary or the seminoma of testis? I see cells which are separated by fibrous septa. Can you see these cells? And these cells are separated by fibrous septa. First important point is the fibrous septa are infiltrated with lymphocytes or plasma cells or giant cells, right? So, these are the fibrous septa which are infiltrated with lymphocytes, plasma cells, giant cells. Very important point. Another, the cells which you see, when you see them on high power, you see they are large polygonal with central nuclei. In a seminoma, they are usually called as a seminoma cells, right? Remember students, in the uh, germ cell tumors of the testis or ovaries, a very important clue for diagnosis for us is the markers, right? So, what is the marker for this germinoma? Placental alkaline phosphatase or it can be HCG or it can be OC34 or it can be NANOG. These can be the important markers, right? Next. Now, <clears throat> When I have a choriocarcinoma of the ovary, right, it is a very, very hemorrhagic and necrotic tumor. The histopathological slide is going to show two types of cell students, syncytiotrophoblast. What is a syncytiotrophoblast? It shows a syncytium, that means a lot of nuclei in a single syncytium-like thing. They look like giant cells. Then you have single uh, nuclear polygonal cells which are called as cytotrophoblastic cells. You will see areas of hemorrhage. They are usually seen in elderly patient. They are very highly aggressive tumor. They are beta HCG positive. So that is another clue which can be given. And when they metastasize to the lung, they produce cannonball meds. All these are important one-liners which you need to know. Then... This potter, this particular slide was asked in the INICT exam in 2022, right? Very, very important, this image, right? This is basically a Schiller dual body, which is also called as a glomeruloid body. And this is basically seen in yolk sac tumor. First of all, what is a Schiller dual body? How will you identify so, tumor cells are basically arranged in two lines across a particular lumen. There is a blood vessel. Can you people appreciate these are the RBCs? So, I have RBCs in the center and then a layer of tumor cells which is surrounding this lumen. And then there is an empty space and there is another layer of tumor cells surrounding it, right? So, that particular body, it looks like a tuft of clapillaries or glomerulus. That is why it is called as a glomeruloid body. Another glomeruloid body in pathology is basically seen in glioblastoma multiforme because of vascular proliferation, right? So, this Schiller dual body is seen in yolk sac tumor. Regarding yolk sac tumor, remember the age of the patient. This is a testicular or an ovarian tumor which is seen in younger age group, right? Then, what are the markers? Alpha fetoprotein and alpha 1 antitrypsin positive. These are the two important markers. Understood? Then students, this is a very easy, I mean one of the easiest testicular or ovarian tumors. Also called as a dermoid cyst or a teratoma. Where there is a derivative of all three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. So if you have a sample which is showing bone, hair, teeth, cartilage or different types of elements like muscle or any glands etc. You make a diagnosis that this is a teratoma or a dermoid cyst. Immediately when I see the gross specimen I can make this diagnosis. Microscopically also you will see different types of these elements. As you can see here this is a hair follicle, this is a cartilaginous element, this is a glandular element, this is a fatty element right. So microscopically also you will see different parts right. So, now you know all of these germ cell tumors. Next students, we have a granulosa cell tumor of the ovary. Again, very important students, two things regarding the granulosa cell tumor of the ovary are 
कॉल एक्सनर बॉडीज एंड कॉफी बीन न्यूक्लिया राइट कैन यू पीपल अप्रिशिएट द न्यूक्लिया हैज अ लॉन्गिट्यूडनल ग्रूव इट लुक्स लाइक अ कॉफी बीन सो दैट इज वाई इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ कॉफी बीन न्यूक्लिया राइट डन एंड सेकेंड थिंग इज अ कॉल एक्सनर बॉडी सो देर आर दीज बॉडीज विद अ पिंकिश मटीरियल इन द ल्यूमन द सेल्स आर अरेंज लाइक दिस these bodies are called as call exner bodies sometimes this can be a spotter also call exner bodies are seen in answer is granulosa cell tumor understood then students if my patient has got a lytic cell tumor of the testes lytic cells normally also contains a lot of rinkies crystals which are yellow colored crystalline structure if there is a tumor of lytic cell it will show more of these crystals so these crystals are called as the rinkies crystal right they are seen in a lytic cell tumor then again a very potential question which has been asked in the ini ctl exam a lot of times that is krukenberg's tumor two very important things in the history which you have to remember is there is a bilateral ovarian mass can you see both sides of the ovary are enlarged and there is usually a symmetrical enlargement right now when you see it microscopically that is also very important we see large number of signet ring cells why because what is krukenberg tumor gastric adenocarcinoma metastasizing to the ovary now what kind of gastric adenocarcinoma is metastasizing to the ovary here it is the mucinous type which shows the presence of signet ring cells because of intracellular mucin understood easy so these are the important lesions or images from the male and the female genital tract which can be asked in your mcq exams right lastly students two images from breast which i think are very very important one is paget's disease can you appreciate these cells in the epidermis students these cells with a perinuclear or a cytoplasmic vacuolation or a halo these cells are actually the paget cells there will be a history of a patient with a erythematous or a scaly eruption of the breast right so this combination think about paget's disease and lastly students invasive lobular carcinoma slide can definitely be given to you because it shows a particular pattern what is the pattern which you see in this image can you people appreciate that the cells are going one after another right it looks like army people going one after another and this pattern is called as a single file pattern or a indian file pattern so sometimes in the mcq it is a single file pattern or a indian file pattern is seen in answer is invasive lobular carcinoma in the history if there is a breast carcinoma history and it is given that it is bilateral it is multicentric right start thinking in terms of lobular cancer and start looking for these monomorphic cells which do not have any adhesion between one another any joining thing between one another and that pattern which they produce is called as a indian file pattern or a single file pattern right genetics also is very important there is a loss of e cadherin because of cdh1 gene mutation because there is a loss of e cadherin cadherin is an adhesion molecule between two cells that is why there are these single monomorphic cells which i see right if i ask you do you know of any other cancer which produces this uh, cdh1 gene mutation yes the answer is going to be gastric adenocarcinoma the gastric adenocarcinoma also has the cdh1 gene mutation or loss of e cadherin right so this is one set of systemic pathology images which are very important and can be asked in your exam please quickly revise them as flash cards just before your mcq exams thank you so much students keep working hard don't worry about your results because one day success is definitely going to come to all of you thank you so much all the best